tape closed the thin notch at the front. Handle the front gently with very dry hands. Uneven warps in the front of a glider can have a disastrous effect on flying. Cut off a square piece of half inch or 12 millimeter tape. You'll tape the underside, the phone book paper side first. Stick it on like a diamond instead of a square with a tape corner at the point of the notch. But half the tape should remain unstuck at first. Then close the V so the paper edges butt up against each other, but don't overlap. When you're satisfied that the edges line up, stick the other half of the tape. Flip the glider over and tape the printer paper gap the same way. A little bit of the front is still not taped, but in a later step that'll be remedied. Folding the tape a little right where the gap was gives the front strength. Pinch the tape at what was the notch between thumb and finger so as to fold it, but only pinch the little bit of paper close to the notch. Then put it on the table and flatten it back out. Too much of a fold can do more harm than good. If you try to fly without sufficient weight in the front, the glider flips up and over. In fact, it's more like how the tumblewing flies. But to keep it flying like a hang glider, there has to be some weight in the front to keep it from pitching over. The weight is tape. By levering, leaning it out over the edge with a boom, you can get away with less weight, better flying. The boom you stick out the weight with is a thin slice of plastic drinking straw. Cut out the straw cutting pattern from the pattern page. You'll use two tape donuts near the ends to temporarily hold the pattern onto the straw while you cut them. Make sure you put the tape donut on this way, with the holes on the side. That way, when you cut through them, they still hold the pattern on. Wrap the pattern around the straw and cut the straw to length. Put one point of the scissors in the straw and cut exactly on an outside line. They're harder to cut straight than you'd think, especially at the end where the plastic pushes the scissors sideways. Pull off all the paper and tape. Pick the strongest two. Avoid the narrowest slivers and those that have weak spots. Later on, you'll know to add just the right amount of tape for weight by a balancing trick. But now's a good time to get most of the tape on. The starting amount of tape I suggest assumes your tape is about half an inch or 12 millimeters wide. Cut down wider tape. Measure out a piece of tape that's about as long as the straw. Tape it to the end of the straw as if it were a flag. Then wrap the tape around. Don't worry if it doesn't wrap neatly. Measure off another piece of tape the same length and wrap it on top of the first. This double weight straw must be taped to the heavier printer paper glider. Cut off a square of tape and tape it like a diamond to the other end of the straw. It should be taped on straight. I can usually see the black line through the straw that helps me align it. The corner of the diamond goes right to the point of the front this time. The phone book paper glider needs a boom and a weight too, but it weighs only about half as much, so it only gets one length of tape rolled on the end. Then it too gets a diamond of tape on the other end, 
and again the corner of the tape diamond goes right to the front point. When the gliders are separated, to get exactly the right amount of tape weight, you'll balance the gliders at the CG, or center of gravity, locations. Cut out the tiny notches. The notches don't hurt them, they just transfer the locations to the phone book paper, and they keep the gliders from slipping and sliding as you balance them. I want to make you aware of something that could cause great frustration later, but if you know about it, it's so easy to fix. This part of the wing can kink or dimple slightly downwards. Sometimes you can hear it. What happens? It goes, I mean, it's going straight down. When it kinks, it'll send your glider straight down. The bend is quite subtle, but if you just notice it and pop it up, everything's okay. Bend the wing tips up on the dashed lines to establish the fold. After you've cut the gliders apart, these will go straight up, but they're easiest to cut if you bend them back down a little now. In flight, these stabilizers will keep the glider from sliding sideways in the air. It's time to separate the two gliders. Cut on this curved line to remove this piece. Cut off the tape on the tips by cutting right on this line. After you cut the first one, they start coming apart, so you have to sort of hold them together until you cut the last one. Fold the wingtip stabilizers so they're straight up. Now that the gliders are separated, they're delicate, especially the phone book paper one, so don't ever pick it up by the stabilizers. You'll throw off the adjustments. Instead, pick it up by the tape. Set the telephone book paper glider aside in a safe place. Start your adjusting and flying with the sturdier printer paper glider. Fold a piece of scrap paper in half. Perch it so it makes a sharp peak to balance the glider on. If it slides down, you might have to tape it or otherwise hold it down. Align the peak with the tiny side notches, the center of gravity locations you cut earlier. If it tips back, add some more tape to the front. If it tilts strongly forward, snip off tiny bits of tape until it's balanced or tilt slightly forward. You'll be adjusting the left and right elevator heights a lot. It'll be easier if you start them off close to where they should be by cutting out the elevator step gauge from the pattern page. Use it on a flat surface. Here, right at the end should be about the same height as this corner. If it's too high, you might have to hold it over the edge of a table to push it down far enough. Adjust the edges of both the elevator ends as high as the corner of the step.